Hi, I'm Joe Gerzak, resident artist and brand manager for Blick Utrecht. I'm so pleased that you could join me in my studio. We're gonna have a series of small lessons on materials and techniques. We're gonna go outside and do some plein air painting. So come along and be inspired. Today we're on a 230 acre farm in Pennsylvania. We're gonna be doing an acrylic plein air sketch. We're gonna start with large shapes and then break them down into small detail. It'll be a very quick and precise painting and we're going to deal with dappled light and we're going to talk about that in parts of the painting. We have rising light coming up on the landscape. We have this warm glowing light from the sun and several farm buildings. We're going to attempt to do a very quick sketch on a 10 by 10 panel. The selection of colors today is titanium white, unbleached titanium, cad yellow light pure, Cad orange pure, cad red medium, hooker's green, brilliant blue, cobalt blue, dioxazine purple, and Payne's gray. So what I'm gonna do in the beginning is I'm gonna start blocking in the shadow parts of the painting. I'm gonna take a little bit of the cobalt blue, the unbleached titanium, and a little bit of the dioxazine purple. And I'm gonna try to block in those shadow parts right away. So we have shadow casting on the, on the farm buildings, some of them in the foreground. So we get this beautiful violet, kind of almost like a neutral purpley color going on there. And it's about the same value as the building in the foreground. So I'm gonna block all this in right away. If you work a little bit smaller, you can get these things done quicker. So you can already see right there how we have all that shadow established. Then I'm gonna block in the foreground. There's a lawn leaning up to it, so I'm gonna block that in. I'm gonna take a little bit of the hooker's green and maybe a little bit of cobalt blue. We'll keep it on the cooler side and we'll add a little bit of yellow to that. And we wanna keep them thin too. So I'm gonna establish that. I'm squinting my eyes again with a big brush and we're gonna bring it right up against the other shadow parts of the building and just get this all laid in. Things are happening quick, so the light is not going to wait. So you have to establish the painting in the bigger shapes. Let me take the green with a little bit of orange, same pile. Let me block in the, the trees that are on the top. Let me get that in while I'm, while I'm working with that green color. So I'm gonna block that in. And I'm gonna just put a hint of a tree on the left side here. Next step is to take the, the brilliant blue and a little bit of the cobalt blue together, maybe with a little unbleached titanium and the white, the titanium white. We got this really soft blue sky color I'm just gonna block in big shapes here. I'm not using any medium today with the acrylics, but what I've done is put out pretty chunky piles of the paint, and I don't really use a medium when I'm painting with acrylics outside, just use, just use the water. So I'm following this design of the sky right around the buildings right now. Just follow that right down to the bottom where it touches the land and the lawn. And then I'll work in a little bit of sky back here in the trees. And then I have a tin roof of one of the buildings. It's semi in the light. So I'm going to take the cobalt blue and a little bit of the red, just a little bit there, a hint of that. And then right away, without hesitation, we're going to put in the light areas. I'm going to block them in. I'm going to take <clears throat> the titanium white a little bit of the uh, yellow, the cad yellow, and a little bit of the orange. We got a nice, bright, very warm white coming from those three colors together. Then we're gonna, I'm gonna block that in. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here. I'm using the uh, Blick Masterstroke bristle brushes, several sizes of the filberts, a number six right now. And if you're not using the brush, leave them in the water. So 
I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush to get this smaller roof here. And then the building behind uh, the building I just painted is a little bit cooler just to show a difference in white. So I put a little bit of cobalt blue in there and we'll block that in. This area of the painting is going to be like uh, heightened focus. We're going to have a little detail there. There's a little piece of tractor equipment under there and a little bit of detail from the underneath the overhang of the, the building. So we'll heighten the focus right there. We'll kind of leave the rest of it a little bit looser. Then we're going to get a little bit of the warmer light on the grass. So I'm going to take again a little bit of the sap green, a little bit of the yellow, and pump it a little bit with white, maybe a little orange in there too. So we get this real glowing color. Again, I'm squinting my eyes looking for the bigger shape. So we get that beautiful light coming in, leading up to the building. And if you want to create softer, dappled light, go over the edges right away as soon as you put down the paint. So I'm softening those edges right away. Now the small Blick Masterstroke Golden Taclon brush. And I'm going to use that to pop in some of the details now. I'm going to start to indicate a little bit more detail of the building. And the beauty of the acrylic is, as you can see, it can go right over that. And already, just with a couple little marks like that, it really starts to shape it up into something more meaningful. Looking at the window in the, in the light on the building, and it's not as a dark as people would think because it's getting the, the sunlight on it. So the dark inside the window is going to be a moderate type gray. And I don't try to paint every little window grid stash on it. I just try to get the generality of that, especially with these quick sketches. And then I'm going to put the shadow one in, which is going to be a lot darker. And that helps to create that illusion of the light as well. I'm starting to feel the energy from the painting. So I'm going to put the gutter in on the foreground building. So remember, block in the big shapes first, then go to these details with the smaller brush. Watercolor brush is perfect for acrylic, and especially something like this synthetic brush. It really lays down a line really nice. And what you find with the acrylics is they'll be very clean. And then if you want the edges to be disrupted, just like I'm doing, I'm touching it with my finger right away. So we're really working it up now, getting the whole thing going. Um, there's a hole from the building. It starts out pretty dark on the top, and it's going to come down to through, and then there's going to be a lighter part, which is getting struck by the light. So I'm going to take the cat orange, and I'm going to heighten that with a little bit of uh, white, and then that kind of kisses the top to the light on that pole. So everything's happening all at once, and the job of the plein air sketch is to try to capture some of those little moments like that where you can grab that little light right when it's happening. I'm going to strengthen the light on this building a little bit because it's showing right down to the bottom there. That may have moved already, but I like that button up against the building that's entirely in the shadow. And then if I'm going to do dappled light, I can just, again, take a little bit of a lower color and kind of just soften them as you put them on. And you can make them a little bit warmer and a little bit softer. So I have to bounce around everywhere because I want to capture the best of everything. So I'm taking the red and the paint's gray and there's the under shadow part under that overhang. It's kind of warm. So we're gonna start working on the foreground building. We're gonna block in some of that. Modify the shadows a little bit. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the red Payne's gray and the cobalt blue. So I'm going to indicate a little bit of these windows in the foreground. It just gives another level of detail to that foreground. And I'm going to heighten it a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of the red and the cobalt blue and bring up the violet color a little bit and indicate the slat of the wood on the building. I'm not going to paint all of them in, just going to suggest. So I'm going to work that along and then there's some light hitting the foreground. There's a patio there, so I'm going to put a little bit of the light there. I'm going to really bump that up and 
Again, dappled light. Get in a little bit of this light. And the corner of the building, just so you could see the structure a little bit. And then a little bit of the cement on the ground is leaning towards a warmer, reddish, cobalt blue kind of color. And I'm going to indicate that now. Then there's a little bit of an overhang on it. And then there's also stones on the ground there. I'm going to jump back to that little area of focus, that the area of the overhang, like we talked about. And I'm going to put a little bit more detail in that. And then there's the piece of farm equipment. Looks like some sort of tractor underneath. That's a nice little detail. We're not going to go crazy with the detail, but I'm just going to put in something so that it indicates detail in that of farm equipment right there. A little bit of uh, kind of rusted metal color, orange, red. A little bit of the light mixed with the titanium will get it to be the metal. And it looks like it has little, little indication of the wheels on both sides. I'm going to get the... Uh, top part of the roof here a little bit of shadow so now you can see that area is worked up it has some beautiful detail to draw you in and then there's a little bit of lip on the big building here overhang it doesn't have to be highly detailed but you have to show a little bit of uh, dimension to the building and then the window on the top is again not as dark as you would think because it's getting the full blown sun and the dark is not going to be as dark plus it's in the distance now i'm going to go to the top of that building and just heighten the light a little bit more with the yellow and the orange together and I, it's a chance for me to redraw it too a little bit better and that right up against the sky really makes it sing and acrylics for outdoor painting if you do chunky piles like i did will really be they're really great because you can really get a lot of information down in a short amount of time. And if you wanted to come back and work it into an oil painting later or take it back to the studio, you would have all these color notes, all this information. So I'm just going to brighten up that building back there. So I'm looking over the whole scene. And in the foreground, I have a little bit of the building to go yet. So from the gutter, there's the overhang in the spout right here. I'm going to bring that down. And then I'm going to work in some of the, the, the tree trunk and the branches. I'm taking red and the panes gray together, maybe a little bit of orange with it. And I'll start the darker parts like that. And again, don't overwork the drawing part. Just kind of indicate in kind of more fluid brush strokes the way those things look the rhythm of the branches and the flow of it and I'll, I'll i'll put some light on that as soon as i can indicate their general shape and the rhythm of them okay so now i'm looking at the light in the tree i'm going to take a little bit of the white the red and a little bit of the orange i have to bring that up to a level and let's see how that looks there just a hint of it in a couple places. I got some nice light going on there in the tree. Again, I'm doing all this with that little watercolor brush. So I'm gonna go to a little bit bigger brush again. I'll go to the number six, Filbert. And I'm gonna take some of the hookers green mixture with the yellow and a little bit of the orange and a little bit of white. And I have this really fluid marks I'm going to make with the light strike in the tree. I'm going to leave the shadow areas as is. I'm not going to make them any darker. It's more of the classic painting, landscape painting. It's going to be a little bit see-through, which is really nice because I had that ground on the panel. I usually tone it with burnt sienna, acrylic, and orange together, and then it gives me a nice complementary tone for the landscape paintings to go on. So I'm just going to indicate a little bit of the tree with a really big brush stroke again. See? J just a little bit of the, the foliage without overworking it. And then there's a tree to the left that we talked about. This tree is getting a, a lot of nice light on it. And then we're not going to show the whole trunk and all that because it'll be a distraction on the edge. So we're going to let that go. 
and we have this nice area like we talked about as a focus. But we, what we can do is put an interesting shadow. We can try it. If we don't like it, we can rub it out. Take the cobalt blue, a little bit of the sap green, and there's a shadow coming from the trunk of the tree. And it kind of leads in to that area that we were going to focus on. Looking at the, the utility pole, I'm going to work that up a little bit more here. Get a little bit richer and a little bit more light on the bottom part. So I'm going to just take that with the orange. A lot of colors that you're mixing outside are very neutral. So they're not going to be really brilliant, clean colors all the time. That's a very neutral, warm color on the pole. And I'm just going to put a hint of it of light on the top part as well. I'm going to revisit this building and we're going to close in on the finish of this painting. So I'm just going to look at the rooftop here and put the line for the shingles and a little bit of the structure underneath that. This building seems to be in disrepair, so there's a little indication of some of the slats being a little bit exposed, unpainted. Not putting a tremendous amount of detail, but when the viewer looks at it, they get it. They see basically what was happening in the scene. So I'm just staying with that foreground building a little bit more. You can get a lot of mileage out of putting a couple delineated marks, just like I did there. There's little, uh, those little stones that I put in the foreground, you're getting a little bit of light right now. So I could just put a little bit of light on them, and maybe by the bottom of the building. And so when you're plain air painting, this is what happens. Uh, the light is changing and you could take the best of all the situations and put them together. You don't have to freeze the moment exactly, but what you can do is observe what's going on. If it adds to the painting, certainly add a little bit more. So I'm putting in that dapple light again, and then it's going to be a little bit pinker on the edge of the dapple light. One thing I missed was the rooftop going behind the pole. And that's where the difference between a photograph and working from life uh, makes all the difference in the world because I can move my head slightly and I could see that that roof is going by and I can even stand up for a second and see that it's going back on an angle and it's going behind this pole. A very important marker I almost missed but it really helps complete some of that. And I could also straighten out the roof Again, the beauty of acrylics, you can redraw right on top. I could put a little bit, just an indication of maybe the door, the window to the door, and a little bit, a hint, so that you know that there's a way to get into the building in the foreground. And I'm just about done here. I'm gonna put a little bit of light up here. I might wanna add just as a final couple notes, right by this building there's like pinkish the stone is turning pink because it's getting a lot of light back there so i'm going to put a little bit of that pinkish stone they're like cement pillars and that kind of adds to that again back there so i'm just checking over every area one more thing in the foreground the foot stone on the ground i'm going to just put a little bit of shadow on the on the foreground one both of them actually so this completes our quick plein air study today on a beautiful farm, 230 acre farm. We're just looking at this early in the morning and we established this entire painting out of a quick acrylic study painting. I hope you enjoyed it today.